Hello everyone. Welcome to The Voice of the Wild, a podcast initiated by Naturalist Foundation. This is the second season, episode 11 of the podcast. With this podcast, we bring you closer to the world of wildlife conservation, scientific research, and government environmental policies. I am Masira, and today I will be talking about some important but interesting topics. We will be discussing how the depletion of fish catch is forcing Sundarban fishers to migrate out, along with what's important to discuss how global warming is becoming the reason for tons of ice melting in Greenland, which could be a huge environmental catastrophe. Also, as we all know, a lot of us haven't realized the amount of damage our greed is causing, and thus cases like a 12,000 acre encroachment in tiger corridors. Are really important to talk about. So, without making your wait, let's get started. Sundarban is the largest mangrove forest in the world that lies on the delta of Brahmaputra, Ganges, and Meghna rivers on the Bay of Bengal. It is named by the UNESCO as a World Heritage Site that is spread across the coast of India and Bangladesh. The site is made by a cluster of small islands of salt-tolerant mangrove forests, intersected by a complex network of tidal rivers and creeks, and holds an exceptional level of biodiversity. This area is known for its wide range of fauna, including innumerable bird species, the Bengal tiger, and other threatened species such as the saltwater crocodile and the Indian rock python. Except the versatile biodiversity. Sundarban is also home to 5 million people and is an ecological fragile and climatically vulnerable region. People living in Sundarban are mainly dependent on fishery, providing millions of them with livelihood and functions as a protective barrier against storms, cyclones and intrusions. Over the last few years, this area has been facing a lot of weathering events. In 2007, Cyclone Sidr caused 40% damage. In 2009, Cyclone Alia resulted in massive casualty. Again, hit by Cyclone Bulbul in 2019, but didn't cause much damage as much as Sidr and Alia did. This was followed by Super Cyclone Amphan in May 2020, which was a literal wrecking havoc causing massive destruction, damage, and casualties. As you know, half the world's population relies on fish as a major source of protein. With the growing population, demand for fish continues to increase around the world, which means more businesses and jobs are dependent on it. Fish ranks as one of the most highly traded food commodities and fuels a global industry worth 362 billion dollars. Millions of people in largely developing coastal communities depend on the fishing industries for their livelihood. While catching a fish is not bad for the ocean, except for when huge vessels catch fish faster than stocks can replenish, which is called as overfishing. Huge vessels such as trawlers or super trawlers from abroad with sensors and radars that search for targeted fishing shoals. have been used in the fishing industry illegally using nets with small diameters trapping juvenile fishes and causing a depletion in their population overfishing in the bay of bengal is resulting in fishless zones in one of the world's largest marine ecosystems most fish species are in a decline with some nearing extinction with the help of advanced technology such as navigators and better trapping equipments trawlers are able to catch a huge amount of fish stock leaving small fishermen from the coastal areas of the sundarban with very little or no fish at all and when the fish disappear so do the jobs and coastal economies all the cyclones and depleting fish is very concerning there is also the fear of a sea almost trying to engulf acres of lands and houses with rising sea levels Given the state of affairs, the rate of migration from these sinking islands is increasing. Mass exodus. In every other household, the men have left the house in search of jobs, working as laborers or fishermen 
in western states such as Kerala, Karnataka or Tamil Nadu in the south, only returning back during festivals or when their houses are being destroyed by the storm. Due to the cyclones, farmlands in the Sundarbans were flooded with highly saline seawater, making the lands absolutely useless for farming. With the farmlands turning saline, people shifted from farming to shrimp cultivation by converting the farms into an enclosed section called as berry. These berries are connected to canals that open into rivers which are suitable for shrimp cultivation. But after being continuously struck by cyclones, the salinity of the berry went too high, making it unfit for shrimp cultivation. On the other hand, it also collects untreated industrial effluents from the northern part of the Sundarbans, released from various factories, including tanneries, garment, plastic and glass factories. Usually, the salinity may have normalized in the course of two or three years, but increasing river pollution never lets perfect conditioning for shrimp cultivation prevail. The contaminated water from the river is destroying the crops, fish, shrimp and also causing health problems in children. In some parts of Kolkata, the residents have been experiencing a decrease in annual catch of the queen fish Hilsa, as this fish requires certain conditions to travel upstream into river estuaries during spawning season. For the last four months, as factories remain shut and no excess fishing is done in the sea, pollution and overfishing remains controlled and cleaner waters help fish survive and breed. Researchers claim that with less pollution, fish stock this year across the area might have raised but not many fishermen could explore and see fish production turn into profits due to the mass movement. According to a study released in August 2020, Greenland has lost a record amount of ice during an extra warm 2019. The melt is massive enough to cover large states like Maharashtra and Gujarat together in more than 1.25 meters of water. According to satellite measurements reported in a study, two years after when the summer ice melted and has been minimal, last summer shattered all records with 586 billion tons of ice melting, which is more than 532 trillion liters of water. According to a study in Nature Communications, Earth and Environment, that's far more than the yearly average loss of 259 billion tons since 2003 and easily surpasses the old record of 511 billion tons in 2012. The study showed that in the 20th century, there were many years when Greenland gained ice. It is observed that not only is the Greenland ice sheet melting, but it's melting at a faster and faster pace. Last year's Greenland melt added 1.5 millimeters to the global sea level rise. That sounds like a tiny amount, but in our world, it's huge. That's astounding as for Alex Gardner, who is the study co-author and a NASA ice scientist. Adding more water from melting in other ice sheets and glaciers along with an ocean that expands as it warms and that translates into slowly rising sea levels, coastal flooding and other problems. While general ice melt records in Greenland go back to 1948, scientists since 2003 have precise records on how much ice melts because NASA satellites measure the gravity of the ice sheets. That's the equivalent of putting the ice on a scale and weighing it as the water flows off. As massive as the melt was last year, the two years before were only on average about 108 billion tons. That shows that there's a second factor called Greenland blocking that either supercharges that or dampens climate related melting. In the summer, there are generally two factors in Greenland's weather. Last year, Greenland blocking, which simply means a high pressure over Canada that changes the northern jet stream, 
caused warm southern air to come up from the United States and Canada and flow into Greenland, forcing more melting. In 2017 and 2018, with the Greenland blocking, cooler Arctic air flowed from open ocean into Greenland, making summer milder. Ruth Mottram, who is an ice scientist at the Danish Meteorological Institute, says this year, Greenland's summer melt has not been as severe closer to normal recent times. She calculated that Greenland coastal regions have warmed on an average 1.7 degrees Celsius in the summer since 1991. The fact that 2019 set an all-time record is very concerning. While 2020 has so far seen average conditions in Greenland, the overall impact of the ice losses seen in recent years could have major implications for people living in low-lying areas of the world. Professor Andy Shepherd from Leed University says the result for 2019 confirms that the ice sheet has returned to a state of high loss with worst-case climate warming scenario. This means we need to prepare for an extra 10 cm of global sea level rise by 2100 from Greenland alone. And by the same time, we have to invent a new worst-case climate warming scenario because Greenland is already tracking the current one. If Greenland's ice losses continue on their current trajectory, an extra 25 million people could be flooded each year by the end of the century. Recent media reports have suggested that Greenland may have passed a point of no return, that the level of global warming that the world is already committed to because of carbon emissions means that all of Greenland will melt. Dr. Sadkin says that this perspective may be correct, but Greenland's fate is still in our hands. He quotes, The rates of sea level rise we expect from Greenland and the risk of sudden sea level rise from Greenland is drastically reduced if we stay below the warming limits. The take-home message is that if we reduce carbon dioxide and we reduce or limit global warming, then also the risk for huge contributions from Greenland in the near future will also be reduced. And we need to stop this individual level from now. We had always known the fact that a rising population adversely affects the availability of resources in the nation. Population pressure and poverty have additionally stimulated forest land encroachment, demand of land, food, and other subsidence product increases with increases population. This is one of the main reasons framing the concept of forest land encroachment in different nations including India. Forest encroachment ultimately had resulted in the decline of wildlife species in many forest areas. One such case of forest encroachment in UP is recently highlighted by the NTCA. The National Tiger Conservation Authority recently asked the Uttar Pradesh government to submit a report on the complaint filed, in which private players are alleged of using fake ownership documents and encroaching nearly 12,000 acres of forest land, parts of which serve as a critical wildlife corridor bordering Corbett National Park and Rajaji National Park in Uttarakhand. This corridor is recorded to have frequent passage of animals, including tigers and elephants. The complaint was lodged by Gaurav Bansal, a lawyer who alleged private companies for encroaching protected forest land in UP. The NTCA, a statutory body under the MOFPC, has directed the concerned authorities to look into the matter and take appropriate action. The forest encroachment case of UP is just a trailer of the game that has been played since ages around the whole country. Last year, a stenographer from the government office itself exposed how the forests surrounding 12 different villages in Uttar Pradesh were transferred to private players, mostly public businessmen from Punjab, Assam, Rajasthan and more. And this gambling game goes on. Remembering events from the past, you all would be aware of the forest land encroachment of Savaska Tiger Reserve in the year 2005. 
These forest lands were converted into several ashrams and other constructive sites by people using fake documents. As a result of this encroachment, Saverska lost all those tigers that resided in its forests, and the government stayed inactive until the situation came when the tigers from Ranthambur were reintroduced into this area again. Even today, there are just 15 tigers recorded in this area, with encroachment still being one of the major causes of their population decline. Each year, government presents budget for tiger protection. All these papers hold account of the money, but the ground reality is far from these papers. Madhya Pradesh tops the list with 5,34,717 hectares of forest land under encroachment, followed by Assam at 3,17,215 hectares of forest and Orissa with 78,505 hectares of forest land under encroachment. According to the India State Forest Report presented in 2017, forest in India covers around 7,8273 square kilometers of land that is just 21% of the total land area in India. Interesting fact related to this data was given by the government in a Lok Sabha session of 18 December 2017 claiming the encroachment of around 13,61,248 hectares of this forest land. This area is nine times more than the area of our national capital, Delhi. These data reveals the failure of the system of the forest department. These figures are just statistic truth of the con country. When diving deeper into the story of encroachment, one can find the Google and YouTube flood with different cases of forest encroachment around every next forest or protected land of the country. With all such activities persisting under the nose of the government, India's commitment to create an additional carbon sink by extending forest and tree covers seems almost impossible. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Stay tuned for more content every week. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated. Also, show your appreciation for us on Patreon by donating a small amount Link is mentioned in the description. Thank you and see you next time.